it be the God who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, and the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation. Forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor. Forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond all compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already forgiven and always forgiven. Amen. <laughs>
Keep us from those things that harm us, and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for this time to come together as a congregation. With great love and appreciation, we pray that you will help us as we seek to understand the issues before us. We ask for your blessings of wisdom, knowledge, courage, and discernment, especially for the Church Council and Land Exploration Team, as we move forward to accomplish your mission. Amen. reading from Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Is this working? I didn't think so. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten our sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is that my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, surely they shall live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. All of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 25 responsibly. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you to be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, 
any consolation from love, any sharing in spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than our, yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who through who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God, word of life. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was preaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And the son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ.
This gospel is packed with many themes. It is a scripture that theologians have written books about, lots of books about. And I promise you, I have not written one for you this morning. Jesus enters the temple and begins to teach the people who are there. The chief priests and elders come to him. They don't come to listen to him. They don't come to learn from him. No. They come to assess the risk Jesus poses to their position and authority. It would be understandable if they were cautious or skeptical. It would be understandable if they had heard reports of what he had preached and decided they need to hear it for themselves. It would have made sense if they felt it was their duty to find out if what Jesus was teaching was in keeping with the Jewish faith. After all, they are the keepers of the faith. But no, they came to protect their position and authority. They start by asking Jesus, by what authority do you do these things and who gave you this authority? They want to catch him saying something that they can twist and use against him. Jesus knows what they're up to. He has no intention of rewarding their moral bankruptcy. The only concern they have is how to manage this new teacher. They reveal this when they refuse to state how they view John the Baptist. Their internal debate is about finding the safest answer to give. They have no interest in the truth. They have no interest in whether Jesus' teacher's teaching nurtures the faith or undermines it. The fear is for themselves. They observe that if John, if we say that John and his teaching is from heaven, the crowd will ask why we did not believe him when he was here. However, if we say that we don't believe John, we don't believe his word and message was from God, the crowd will turn into a mob and reject us. They honestly don't care whether Jesus was sent by God, was a crazy man, or was a con artist. All they care about is their position. So they take the, they take the easy way out. They take the coward's way out and say that they don't know. It is something we see many times in life, how to dodge a question. We have many expressions for it, some of which gives us the right to back off. Pick your battles. Are you ready to die on this hill? I want to live to fight another day. Well, my particular favorite, which I used to say when I was younger, which is, what's in it for me? I stopped saying that when someone took me seriously and started um, explaining what I was going to get out of a situation. He didn't realize I was just lightening the mood. <laughs> it is something we see many times in life. And in faith, it's a strange thing. It is a strange mix of the day-to-day -day loving and listening for God while also welcoming to be a wit the mission to be a witness to Christ Jesus. It is a million little things we do to keep our church vi vi vibrant and an expression of God's love. It is seen within us when we are humble and know we have fallen short. It is worshiping God in community with others while doing God's work. It is, it is serving God through serving our church, our neighbors, our country, 
in God's beautiful creation. It also asks the most fundamental questions of life. We seek to understand what the God of all wants for us and wants from us. We seek to understand the nature of God and human nature. We seek to love with our whole heart. We seek to stand before God in fear and trembling. We seek to make our hardships and struggles serve the greater good in some way. From the biggest realities to the most humble concerns and everything in between. Of course, Paul has some ideas of how we can walk this path. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Let each of you not look to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on the cross. Paul is honest about the cost of doing it. It can lead to the cross. The followers of Jesus know what they are risking. They know that Christians are being hunted and killed in their day. There is a lot of seriousness in what they are doing. They are proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah and that they were his humble and obedient children and each other's brothers and sisters. They are claiming that that truth is the very center of their lives. And they're claiming that this is the greatest joy and love that they have ever experienced. Paul acknowledges that death and, su and suffering can be the consequences of following Jesus for the believer. Yet he is proclaiming that the most exquisite joy in this life is following this path. His poetry practically sings with joy. These are the words that Christians have clung to when they have faced persecution for almost 2,000 years. They are also the words that lead to the deepest, strongest love we will ever experience. They call us into a relationship with God who infuses our heart with love. It calls for us to put our heads in our hearts, in our hearts, and to give them to God. Pascal said that. God will use both. Something deeper than our head tells us that this is true. Our heart, our soul, sings out that both are true. In today's reading, we are looking at the power, joy, and promise. In the readings, we move from the reality of threat and punishment to the bonds of love and hope. It is a lot to hold on to and to hold on to both of them at the same time. We often separate them and look at them one at a time to wrap our heads around these possibilities. However, the church strives through its music, through its prayer, through its fellowship to tie them together. And there's an old hymn that says, no more crying here, we are going to see the king. One way of understanding this connection is to think about when a child is born. The parents can watch DVDs about childbirth for hours. They can see, they can see the physical pain of labor. However, knowing it does not deter them from continuing the pregnancy 
in living with joyful in anticipation for the most wonderful gift they have ever wanted. The mother knows that delivering this baby will likely be the most physically painful thing she will ever endure. Notice I said physical. Both the joy and the fear of this undertaking coexist. But the joy and the hope and the promise went out. And we are in need of both sides today. This congregation is in transition. You are in a between times. The uncertainty of it can be scary and it can be painful. So you need to hear the words of Jesus promising that he will never leave you or forsake you. You need to hear the consolation and encouragement of scripture as you decide what course to take. You also know that you are the God, you are the church of God just as you are. In the middle of this transition, you are also feeling the joy, hope, and excitement that comes with embarking on this journey together. There is great hope that a new ministry will give birth to deeper bonds among the people here at Lutheran Church of Christ the King, as well as bear witness in the wider world of God's love. <coughs> we are still in the middle of COVID. It may have subsided. It did not go away. We are still getting new cases and new strains. We have a war overseas. Back at home, we are seeing property crimes and crimes in parking lots and businesses moving out of cities. I have lived in cities most of my life. So looking around in a parking lot and being aware of my surroundings is second nature. It costs no it costs no energy and no conscious effort. However, the other day, as we walked to our car from Costco, my spouse observed that there was, there was security in the parking lot and that he was seeing it everywhere he went. I knew it, but I had never given it a second thought. Eh, I was used to it, so to speak. However, the reality of the scale of it sunk in. There is some kind of desperation, entitlement, and hopelessness growing in our country. And there's no denying it. But this is when we need, we fiercely need, the hope and promise of God in Christ Jesus. We need the love that surpasses all understanding we need to let God fill up our hearts with it. We need to live it in a way that enables others to see it. Let God lead you in his truth and teach you that God is our salvation. God is my Lord and salvation, Savior. I pray and count on that daily.
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
everybody online.
Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise.
cannot see the ending, by the paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
for your faithful service and all that you give. Our next one is a bit eclectic, but it was perfect for Zach because <laughs> Zach Cullen received this quilt. It's got a little bit of everything. <laughs> Zach um, is a band director in the public school, and so this is an orchestra. He has a dream of these students becoming orchestra members, maybe. But it's, um, it's just full of musical instruments and uh, music staff and piano, and Zach knows how to play anything. <laughs> Mom, good job, good job. <laughs> and Connie's fabric, Nicholas helped me pick this out, is bookworms. It's so cute because you give Connie a book and she's lost. Yeah, and that's it's definitely true. And so it's just these little worms sitting on top of books. And it's so cute. Oh. And it's just perfect for Connie. So thank you to our thank you. <laughs> Thanks be to God. God. 